Time to catch up with UTRGV Baseball. I'm Jonah Goldberg. This is the head coach of the UTRGV Baseball team, the one and only Mr. Manny Mentrana. Thank you, Jonah. Good to be here. Well, Coach, uh, over the weekend, dropped two out of three to CSU Bakersfield. Uh, you know, a series that uh, you start off and you just got this brilliant pitching performance. Ryan Jackson wasn't even supposed to start over the weekend. Johnny Gonzalez, a little soreness. So Jackson comes in and he was almost perfect. <laughs> Um, you know what, uh, Ryan did a great job stepping in for, for uh, Johnny, Jonah. Um, as you mentioned, um, you know, I think it was a three-hit shutout, uh, 19 hitters in a row. Um, he just a marvelous, marvelous performance on Friday night. And then we turn around on Saturday, um, and we play like the Bad News Bears, errors. Um, offensively, we did a good job, a bunch of quality of bats. I think we were around 60%. I um, mean, that's pretty darn good. But unfortunately, our pitching and defense uh, just weren't there. And then on Sunday, we got shut out. A lot of credit goes to their, to their pitcher. I mean, really kept us off balance. Um, we didn't do a very good job of adjusting. Um, but overall, the, obviously, the bright spot was Ryan Jackson. And, you know, you need that, that emergency start, and Ryan gave it to us. Well, what does that mean for Jackson going forward over the rest of the season? Jackson is, uh, again, in, in the hunt. Um, obviously, uh, Johnny Gonzalez has been our, our most consistent arm on the weekends. Um, so he's our Friday night guy. And then um, Justin Quinones has had, uh, you know, mostly good appearances, a couple bad ones. Uh, Andrew Garcia has been, you know, here and there. Um, so Ryan Jackson is in the mix. We're still debating uh, for this weekend. Um, after Friday night, uh, who's going to throw Saturday, who's going to throw Sunday, and in, and in what order. So we're still, as a staff, kind of uh, determining that. Uh, so when we get to Utah, uh, we can do the, uh, the best we can. Now, when you're working on that rotation, you know, you're not that far from the WAC tournament at this point. Uh, next week, you've got a Tuesday game, and then a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then you're off to the tournament. And so do you now look at that? Does that Tuesday game become a game that you might, you know, the last Tuesday game you used Johnny Holstaff. Would you use a regular starting pitcher for a regular start to try and get somebody in line to start in the WAC tournament? Well, obviously, we can't use Johnny. Um, <laughs> and then, um, obviously, he pitches Friday, and the game is Tuesday. But typically that Tuesday would be, um, if we get into the tournament long enough, um, that Tuesday night guy would be probably our fourth starter. Um, so what you really want to do is match up. Um, obviously, you want to get into the winner's tournament uh, or the winner's bracket right away, and that's probably going to be whoever we, uh, we play will be uh, Johnny Gonzalez, and then kind of match up uh, who matches up better with what team um, and how they performed against them during the season. So, uh, again, Brian Jackson gives us that, that, that fourth starter that if you lose and fall into the loser's bracket, you're definitely going to have to play more than, than three games. Well, uh, if, if you're not a top two seed, uh, which is looking like what it will, would be, uh, you'd have to win four games anyway in order to win the tournament. So That's right. So it kind of helps you to set things up having that extra non-conference game. Was that part of the reason you added it at, for that specific date? No, it was, you know, it's good to have a midweek game just to keep them um, – fresh and you know the hitters to see some live pitching and for the pitchers to see some live hitters because you can inter squad um, but the intensity and the competition level uh, especially at this time of the year it, it's just not the same uh, so it's always good I mean we hardly ever play this late in the season um, but we were able to add that because uh, Corpus had a rain and uh, and then obviously us uh, the uh, the games against Northern Colorado um, were wiped out so it, it turned out to be pretty good and that'll be a time where finals are over and everything so uh, you know, what, what else are you doing all day but playing baseball? That's right. Um, this week has been tough. The last two weeks, actually. Um, obviously, last week we gave them a lot of free time so they can start preparing for their finals. This week is the actual finals. Um, and even our practices have been, um, you know, jumbled up. Uh, we practiced at 6 yesterday because most of them, uh, most of them could have uh, made it at 6. Today we practiced at 3 because we couldn't practice at 6 because a lot of them had exams. We couldn't practice in the morning. I mean, mornings are the best time, obviously. Um, but we just couldn't get it done. Too many of them um, had issues. So uh, this week is a tough week, and, and it's always tough when they're going in their finals, but that takes a priority. You talked a little bit last uh, over the weekend uh, on the t telecast about how sometimes there's a little bit of a brain drain uh, when you have the finals, and that can affect guys uh, when they're playing. So the first series after finals coming up at uh, Utah Valley this weekend, it, is there ever some kind of like uh, bump back in the other direction because of that? Yeah, usually when the finals are over, um, they kind of they relax and they know, hey, you know, school's out, summer's here. Um, so they're a lot more relaxed. There's a lot more energy, a lot more intensity. Um, so we're hoping that that is the case now this weekend at Utah. Obviously, this past weekend at Bakersfield, you know, you're going to have some guys that probably study two, three, four in the morning um, to come out 
and try to play at a high level is tough. Uh, but they need, uh, you know, they have to do what they have to do in order to make good grades. And if, you know, if you have to stay up till four in the morning to make sure that you get good grades, then, you know, so be it. Um, at the end of the day, uh, they're here to get a degree first. And then, um, obviously, uh, as long as the academics doesn't interfere with their baseball, um, then they can concentrate on baseball. Yeah, and, you know, th I think that, that could be, you know, when you, when you look at your team and try to figure out, you know, the defense wasn't, over the last two games, wasn't one of what we've seen all year. I mean, you, you've had the best defensive team in the WAC, and all of a sudden, it just wasn't. It was, it was ugly. Yeah, I mean, it, there has to be an explanation, <laughs> and, I, and I refuse to ugly. believe that they just suddenly forgot how to play defense. I mean, I think finals yeah. make sense. Yeah, yeah. There's no doubt that they, you know, they didn't forget how to catch a round ball. <laughs> and you're right. Uh, we were playing uh, pretty good defense all year long in the last couple games, you know, four errors, three errors. Very unlike us. Uh, very unlike this group. Um, and again, you, you don't know. Um, if they're, you know, they've been up all night studying. Um, and again, they have to do that. I'd rather them not cram, obviously, but, uh, you know, if you have to cram um, to make a, a good grade, then you better cram. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's definitely a correlation trying to keep that. And, you know, we kind of try to work around their schedule um, and kind of, hey, you know, let's get you know, in and out of this quickly um, so you can go back to studying. But uh, there, there's definitely an effect. Uh, Sunday's game, Andrew Garcia, who was coming off of uh, the rough outing the previous weekend where he got knocked out, I think, in the second or third inning, and uh, he gave you seven pretty good innings. Yeah, Andrew pitched well. Um, and again, Andrew has had uh, his, his outings where he's really dominated. Um, and then he has uh, had a few outings where he's kind of struggled a little bit. But uh, he's a tough competitor. Um, you know, I, I like having him in the program. Um, like seeing him on the mound. I think um, you're going to see a big change in him. Um, Coming in, obviously, our set, this is his second year in our system because I think he has the stuff to be a very good pitcher. Um, but it takes time, um, especially with the pitchers. They can only throw one bullpen a week. Then they go have to do their outing. And then during the spring, you have to be very careful not to wear him out. So um, we still have uh, uh, great belief in Andrew. And I think uh, he's, you know, he's going to be a big uh, reason um, if, if we win the, uh, the tournament. And um, he's going to have a, a big say-so in it. And Saturday, your bullpen was trying to give you a chance to come back. Parker Gallegos, you know, his second straight outing of about four innings, just shut out ball. Uh, Parker did exactly what we asked our bullpen to do when they come in. Um, and it, it just kind of depends on the situation. And obviously, Parker came in uh, when the other team had a pretty good lead. And his job is just to hold that team there and give us a chance to come back slowly. Um, and he did just that. Uh, gave us the opportunity to come back, held them scoreless. Um, and we pecked away, pecked away. We just fell a little short. Student Athlete Awards Banquet was on Sunday, and uh, your team really raked in a lot of the hardware. Uh, Jose Garcia, the Male Student Athlete of the Year, Austin Oaks, the Comeback Player of the Year. Uh, Cole Oncar. Oh, yep, Cole Oncar was the uh, Lou Hassel Award uh, winner. Uh, you got yourself an award, the Vaquero Spirit Award uh, yep. for coaching, and uh, pretty cool, good night for your team. You know what, it, it's always the, uh, a, a great night to have all the athletes together. Uh, Jonah, so they can really see um, what all the other uh, student athletes and other sports have, have accomplished throughout the year and what the teams uh, have accomplished. Uh, so it was a great night, in my opinion, probably um, as far as the food and the decor, uh, the best ever. Obviously, we didn't have the great Jonah Goldberg MC, which we had in the past, but Tony did a great job. Um, but it's always nice to have all the athletes together um, celebrating each other. Um, because being a student athlete at the Division One level, it's it's extremely difficult. Um, not only are they full-time students, but obviously, you know, playing their particular sport, that's a full-time job with practices and travel and games. So to have them there together, and you know what, it's 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 weird when they you know they dress up and you know you kind of wait. I didn't recognize you when you dress up. It's uh, it's always uh, it's always a fun night, um, and you know some of our guys were fortunate enough uh, to win some awards. Um, but it, it was a great night and just happy to, uh, to be there and recognize all the student athletes um, from all the different uh, programs. They do a great job. Male Breakthrough Athlete of the Year as well, Scott Mercer. You know, it's funny, when Breakthrough Athlete of the Year came up, you know, there are four nominees, three of them were from your team. Yeah. So, you know, normally when there's one from your team, you can be like, oh, I hope so-and-so wins it. Is that weird for you when you're sitting there watching? It's like, okay, 75% chance that I win? <laughs> yeah, the, the, uh, the odds were definitely st uh, stocked in our, or stacked in our favor, but... Um, you know, Mercer uh, has really come a long way uh, from a guy. I think he hit less than 200 last year, um, over 300 this year. Uh, a senior, worked extremely hard in the summer, tremendous student, uh, great family. Um, so it was nice to see him um, get, that, uh, get that award. 
And then uh, you get your own spirit award. What would that mean to you to be able to get to be honored like that? Well, you know what? It's always a, an honor um, to receive any award. Um, but, you know, when they kind of recognize you for, you know, helping, doing what you can to help out everybody else in the department and the university, that's always good. And, and it should be that way. Um, you should just not be concerned um, with, with, with your program. Um, there's a time for that, obviously, as a head coach. But you know what? Anytime that you can help out other programs or, you know, do things for the university, um, you should be, if you, I mean, and willing and able to do that. Um, so it was a great honor uh, to receive the Spirit Award, and hopefully um, we continue to do it, uh, do it again next year. Uh, Utah Valley, yeah, your next series, that's a ballpark that's at altitude where fly balls go to leave the ballpark. Uh, well, what do you have to tell your pitchers about how to adjust to that kind of place? That's right. Not only is it uh, obviously an altitude, but the, the left field fence is extremely, extremely short. Um, so there, it's definitely a hitter's park. Um, and usually, you know, when we go there, either one or two of those games are a lot of runs. Uh, so um, hopefully we can uh, hit a lot of fly balls and <laughs> let the altitude take care of it. You know, but the pitchers, you know, the, the biggest thing they need to do is what they need to do every game is actually keep the ball down, get to get some ground balls. You elevate the baseball, chances are, you know, the ball is going to be in the air. Um, so it's, it's a tough park uh, for a visiting team, obviously. Um, Utah Valley's got a great coaching staff. They've got some uh, wonderful players, um, and they're having a nice year. So it's going to be a, it's going to be a tough week, and it's always tough on the whack on the road. Um, but we need to go, and we need to do what we need to do. The left field is really short. Pop-ups that would normally be caught by a third baseman here, I think, leave the ballpark. <laughs> but, uh, you know, right center field, there is a huge uh, alley. It goes back. I think there's even a little corner back there, if I remember correctly. So uh, do, you, do you have to work on how you uh, align your outfielders to guard against that? Yeah, it's also obviously a big advantage uh, uh, for, their, for their outfielders. Obviously, they played it before. So, yeah, there's a, it's, it's, it's a little... Um, the dimensions are a little skewed because it's so short, but then it just kind of opens up and you have this huge alley out there. Um, and we need to be aware of that, especially the center fielder, that you know what, you can really go back a long, long ways over there. And then when he hits that wall um, and that where the two walls meet, how it plays off the wall. So we'll go there um, at uh, tomorrow. Um, we'll, get, uh, we'll fly in, we'll get some lunch, go to the hotel. The boys will rest for about two hours and then we'll go to the field and try to get as acclimated as we can um, with it um, so that we're ready to go on Friday. Uh, Jose Garcia in center, Cole Ancar in right, your last game. Neither of them have ever played at the ballpark, uh, but was that something that you liked and are going to continue to look at the rest of the season? You know what? Um, Maido in center field has a little bit more speed. He can get to some balls. Obviously, Cole has a better arm. Um, so if you're looking at speed for your center fielder, um, that will be, you know, Garcia. And then you have the better arm, which is Cole, probably our best outfielder's arm in right field. So it was, it was a good mix. We kind of still trying to see how we can become the best team we can. But chances are that's, what, uh, that's how it's going to be on Friday night. UTRGV is at Utah Valley Friday and Saturday, 7 p.m. Central Time, and then Sunday at 1 Central Time. And you can find the links to the broadcast and live stats over at GoUTRGV.com. He's Manny Mentrana. He's the head coach of the UTRGV baseball team. Thank you for having me, Jonah. We'll see you next week. But until then, get those V's up. <laughs>